Joining me now is Academy Award winning screenwriter and producer Mark Boll. He's the screenwriter of the new movie Detroit, which opens everywhere on August 4th. Mark, welcome to the show. Thanks. Uh, your other two uh, major, I guess you won for Zero Dark Thirty? Uh, uh, I, that I right? won a Writer's Guild Award for Zero Dark Thirty, 30 and, and for Herlock we won the Academy I mean, Award for Best Picture. And so Best there you Picture. go. Yeah. Two uh, nonfiction events that you dramatized, mm -hmm. and now this project is Detroit. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the story that sparked the riots of, of 1967 in Detroit. But let me ask this, why'd you pick this story in, in Detroit? when you, you could have picked, unfortunately, a lot of cities mm -hmm. in either 67 or 68. Yeah, for sure. I mean, so why Detroit? Well, it really came out of talking to specific people who had survived this incident at the Algiers Motel, which uh, is an incident that's largely been forgotten. And when I went and spoke to some of the survivors of it, I was amazed that some of them hadn't spoken about it in 50 years. And they were actually encouraged at the time not to speak about it. So even though it was widely known, it sort of got swept under the carpet of history. Why this topic, uh, after you did essentially a war movie, mm -hmm. why this topic? Well, I don't think of it as a topic, although I can see why you would say that, mm -hmm. because it does deal with some very topical issues, and it's obviously especially relevant today. Yeah. But I, I really come at it from the point of view of characters and people. And I was just moved by what these individuals went through and really their story of how they survived. Probably one of the most, not to be hyperbolic, but probably one of the most terrifying nights in American history. So it's a sort of survival story. And it was my entry point into it was what they went through. What's interesting about this movie is that when we've dealt, when we've had dramatizations of the civil rights of some of the Mm -hmm. the fights of the battles of the civil rights, of civil rights era. Mm -hmm. There's always good guys and bad guys and a happy mm -hmm. ending. Mm -hmm. This is, it doesn't feel like a happy ending. Well, I, 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 I mean, the story's not over, right? We're, right. Still, we're still litigating these issues. And as a society, obviously, we're still grappling with, it's not news to anybody that this country still suffers from racial strife. Right. And so I think the ending is powerful and emotional, but it's not a... It's not a typical Hollywood ending. What, uh, it was interesting, it, we're conducting this interview on Friday. Uh, on the same day, the president s spoke uh, in front of a group of law enforcement officials in Long Island. Mm -hmm. And perhaps he, it's a joke with what he threw out there, but he seemed to, many people saw it as an encouragement of saying, hey, um, uh, you know, it's okay to rough people up as you are, uh, put them in the paddy wagon, I think, mm -hmm. is, is some form of that. Um, it was stronger than that, it, actually. It, it, it was, and it didn't come across it was, as a joke. It, it was, yeah, it was an encouragement. And it came across as an encouragement. It, it just seemed, here we were, we spent the last five years, really, in this country where this issue has been surfaced much higher than it had been for, for decades before that. Your movie, again, sort of, you're getting at the root of when this problem started. What was your reaction? It's obviously an inappropriate thing to say and very ignorant too. I mean, we have uh, constitutional protections in this country which are there for very good reason and you're innocent until you're um, proven guilty. And the, the reason you don't want police officers making those uh, kind of determinations in the field is that they can make mistakes. And the movie really documents the cost of, of that kind of prejudicial thinking. And in the case of what happened in 1967, it led to uh, triple murder. But I don't think that even though I think maybe his remarks resonated with some of his base, mm -hmm. I don't think that it would be uh, that that sentiment is shared by, by police departments. I'm curious, what were your, uh, you, it was interesting how you went about getting the story here. I've read some other interviews that you've done, you know, the best you can, you interviewed as many people as you could find that had, were, were part of this. How many police officers from then were you able to talk to? I spoke to probably half a dozen police officers who um, were either, either, I mean, unfortunately, a lot of the people that were directly there that night have passed That's away. Right, I figured. But um, one of the most interesting people I spoke to in this whole thing was a gentleman named Ike McKinnon, who had been one of the first African Americans to join the police department in, in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And because back in those days, it was a predominantly white department. And he eventually became the chief of police. And one of the amazing things is that during the course of, of, of time from 67 to the present, the demographics of the police department have 
change radically and it's now probably the most diverse department in America. And hearing his experiences comparing what he went through in the 60s as a police officer and the prejudices that he encountered as a police officer mm -hmm. to what he felt was the situation in, in today was really interesting. How do you think uh, today's law enforcement uh, will view your movie? Well, I hope they go see it. And I think that um, it, for anybody that's interested in law enforcement, it's, a, it's an interesting movie because it gets to the heart of one of the more uh, explosive events in, in law enforcement history. And the leadership of the Detroit Police Department, uh, which obviously has the most vested interest in, in the way the movie portrays them, uh, has seen the film and they responded very positively to it. And they've since invited the rest of the department to see it. So we're now screening it for all of the Detroit police force, a uh, hundred people at a time. Uh, you have another project you're in the midst of, mm -hmm. um, which is one that I'm, I'm, I'm both fascinated by and, and I'm scratching my head as to why you want to tackle it, which is the 2016 election. Mm -hmm. And I say this and I ask you why you want to tackle it in that it's, it's so raw mm -hmm. and it's so recent mm -hmm. in considering how, re how much everybody is following politics today for various reasons why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. Do you think there'll be an appetite for this? <laughs> I mean, how have your ratings been? No, I, well, right, in real life, how is it, do you think you can, do you think people want to relive this? I think it's possible for drama to find um, a way in uh, uh, that's perhaps a little more clarifying than the day-to-day -day, um, news cycle. And so I think but that... You, I guess what I say is your, your job is sometimes you have to bring drama to... Sometimes where there's not drama or you're not sh sort of sure. <laughs> we are living a real-life drama. Yeah, it's a challenge. It I mean, that, that's, that's what I mean. Yeah, it's a challenge because of what's happening is so unprecedented. But at the same time, I think that's where you want artists to step up. And I'm really grat gratified that people are giving me the opportunity to step up. But also a lot of other people in Hollywood are declaring that they're going to tackle the, the current situation. I think ultimately not to take anything away from the next emoji movie or whatever, but sure. we want we want to live in a culture where uh, filmmakers are engaged and alert and paying attention to what's going on. So we're doing a limited series and maybe it won't be so limited depending on how things go. Well, and Unpacking and the election and what, what just happened. Now, I was just gonna say, so here you're, you're trying to sketch that out and yet every day, those of us that are in reporting on what happened, considering what's going on with the Russian investor, every day there's a new piece of information that maybe you have to, uh oh, wait a minute, I gotta redo, I gotta redo the June scenes or things like that. Yeah, there's a bit of that. I mean, I'm doing my own homework and so it's interesting to see what, um, what surfaces up to the news and what doesn't. But again, I think that, that I hope there will be an interest in kind of cutting past the sort of noise of the news and not to be, not to be dismissive in any way. Uh, but there, I, I but get there, it. But there is a sort of sense of there's this accretion of detail every day and, and what does it all add up to and what is the big picture and who are the human beings at the center of that story? And so that's what we're going to be looking at. I, I want to close this up and sort of tie this up about, you know, the, the issue of drama, fictionalized, nonfiction, things like that. The promos for the Detroit movie have touted the fact of its historical accuracy. Um, where did you have to veer off facts? Where, where did you have to do and, and how hard is that? When, when do you make that decision of, okay, we know these are the facts. I'll dramatize this, but not this. Yeah, I mean, there's no hard and fast rule on that. And we try to tell the story as honestly and as respectfully as we can. And I think it's an important story to tell. And it's an important story, especially given your remarks and what the president said on Friday. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he really should see the movie because uh, this is a piece of history that in a lot of ways speaks to what we're experiencing in the present. And, um, you know, of course there's fictionalization, but it's a true story. The White House asked you to screen it at the White House, which many previous presidents for serious, important movies like this have done before. Would you screen it for them? I believe we've asked the White House to see the movie, and I know that the president is a, is a, is a film buff, so I hope he does, he does see it, and I think we've invited other members of his administration to see it as well, and I hope they see it. All right. Well, if they do, maybe you'll come back and we'll talk about it. Maybe they'll learn something. There you go. Mark Bull, uh, congratulations on, on Thank the movie. You. It's getting a lot of and tremendous reviews. That's thanks a lot. You got thanks it. a lot. Hey, NBC News fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and then click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.